Greetings and welcome to VR Humans podcast, a series of experimental co-creation interviews with your favorite thinkers and artists. Meet the humans behind your future. Are you ready? And we are live. We're recording. Okay, mm -hmm. it's hitting the other thing. Like I need to record the video here. Oh, we're in the future. <laughs> I feel like a like a the, the pilot of the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> To do push push all the buttons and and light, hit the levers it's like ah, Rosie, welcome welcome to the first episode of this weird podcast. I'm so glad to have you as a guest here. Also, thank you so much for setting up your tilt brush as well. Um, yeah. For the people watching and don't know what's happening here is, um, this is a podcast where I will invite a couple people from the industry. Uh, artists and also people who might inspire other creators to just help them express themselves, figure out their lives or just play with technology or most importantly, just have fun. So I'm very glad that Rosie Summers joined us today. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Rosie. Hey, hey. So it's just, it's just <laughs> never episode. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing, Rosie. You're in the UK and you've I been... Know creating amazing tilt brush pieces for how long? How did your journey start? Do you want to tell us a bit about it? Yeah, no, of course. Um, so, oh God, many, many years ago, uh, just just when VR was first starting out, really, mm. um, I was seeing a lot of things on um, YouTube and that about headsets and, yeah. you know, it, was still, it still felt quite distant. And then, um, mm. and then I saw the Google Cardboard and that was, that was, pivotal because it was a uh -huh. piece of cardboard you put your phone inside and that's it you transfer yeah. it into another world and that absolutely blew my mind uh -huh. and as an animator i've um, always been looking at the way of telling stories uh, mm. stuff like that so when i when i was put into this animated world through the screen of my phone i was just absolutely in awe and i was thinking about all the possibilities of this medium and how mm. i can now put people inside my narratives put people inside my worlds yeah it was, it was just absolutely groundbreaking and then i saw that video of um glenn keen um the disney, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. disney animator painting oh, that was so good that one was so God. good yeah. i that, agree that video was just such a pivotal moment because the next day i just went out and bought a headset <laughs> <laughs> it changed my oh, wow. that video. Yeah. Um, but it's like and, and I like that. I like that part because yeah, that's that's how the amazing journey starts. Like, yeah. um, it's like you have this gut feeling. Do you know oh, what yeah. I mean? It's like this gut feeling. It's like you saw this, yeah. and then you get more and more confirmation. It's like this is right. I yeah. need to do this. And it grows and it grows stronger. It's like almost to the verge of like you just need to act now because that gut feeling is telling you so strong. It's like. This is my medium now. Yeah. This is how I can express myself in all the way I want to express myself. Absolutely. And I'd, I'd always been looking at new ways of telling stories. I was mm. a fine artist for quite a while. So I was, I was painting uh -huh. portraits, really trying oh, to, to tell the stories of the emotions of the people that I was painting, uh. how I applied paint and stuff like that. And then I went into animation where I was telling stories through mm. the move. Um, and motion and then mm -hmm. yeah, the, the next step was was vr it was to be the next step for, for telling stories was to actually people be living my story mm -hmm. of just viewing them on a screen they could be inside them and that that was exactly ah uh, i'm so glad i'm really glad so glad you share that sentiment because yeah. that's the thing that like it's not just a passive medium like no, it's like it's like you just said it's like you sit in front of a screen and you absorb the information you absorb the story yeah. it's like it's a completely different medium where you are part of the story or you're part of the art piece or of the video game and uh, i'm so glad you you, you share that sentiment yeah, yeah. It's the hard part of of uh, or not the hard part that's the most exciting part really uh, yeah it's like the showing it to people as showing it to people it's like hey look at this check yeah. this out and it's like and it's the reactions are just the best thing it is so rewarding to put a new person in mm, yeah. and see their reaction especially I agree. The brush as well yeah. <laughs> exactly it's like you see their vr yeah. smiles like yeah. for the first time when they put on the heads and they're like just grinning with I that know. piece of plastic on their head yeah <laughs> it's amazing it just it'll never get old it'll never get old right 
it's like you've been doing this like for four or five years now yeah yeah um oh, it's like yeah. and then like literally it never gets old even after like such a huge amount no. of time if you think about it, it's like it's still like every single time it's like oh amazing vr smells <laughs> <laughs> yeah smiles i love that um and i also saw i think that's one of the first things where i'm like oh, okay now i recognize her um i saw angry birds oh, yeah. my brain associates you with angry oh, birds yeah. and it's like tell us that story because i was like holy crap that is freaking amazing yeah so that was an amazing project to work on so i'm currently working at a game studio uh, here in leeds yeah. called xr games and mm -hmm. last year we released our first title um for psvr which was yeah. angry birds movie 2 under pressure so it's not, oh. it's not the angry birds game that um you're thinking of with the slingshot and stuff like that it's a complete mm. take on the angry birds ip and um, oh, okay. yeah so we, we've not included the whole the slingshot traditional aspect we've, we've put <laughs> that on its on its head and we we did a um a piece uh, of the movie which was where they're in a submarine traveling mm, to yeah. the island we took that and then we made an overcooked-esque style vr oh. -op game um where you are running around on a submarine things are getting uh, chaotic things are exploding mm. um and you're trying to yeah run this this submarine um to to complete your journey so that was super fun to to work on because i was an animator so all uh -huh. all i was doing was just making piggy scratch bums pick noses <laughs> <laughs> the best thing it sounds, sounds like a dream job, really. It's like, whoa, what did you do today? It's like, oh, I make piggies do their thing with the noses. Like, <laughs> that's, that's that's beautiful. Yeah, that, that was amazing to work on. Um, yeah, so that that's that. And it was um, it really mm. the time last year. Feels eight. That sounds amazing. This, this is so good. Because I saw, I saw you, the picture I have in my head is like, I saw you in the store. Oh yeah, and it's like oh, this is your game. That's the thing you made this. Hey, hey, you you contributed to this. And it's like that's always like such an amazing feeling, like oh, shipping a product. It's, it's like insane. this is your baby, and it's out there yeah. now. It's like you put in so much time you, you and yeah. in there, and 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 that's amazing. It's, yeah. it's an amazing no, uh, it's feeling. Such a feeling. Just going in, seeing a game there. Mm. Was, yeah, it's such such a lovely feeling. Did you always know know that you want to be an animator or artist? Because what I see or also know it for myself is like creative people in general, does not matter if they're like writers, authors, yeah. uh, visual artists, they tend to, they need to express themselves in, on so many different la layers. Like yeah. there's probably a, a painter also creating music or um, doing animation or also sketching traditionally or in 3D and and how how did your journey start or how did your journey unfold itself? Yeah, that that is really interesting because right from an early age I was doing storyboards. Mm. I'd made this character called yeah. called Superfish, and it was a superhero fish, <laughs> and he lived in Finland undersea, and he saved the world yeah. each each day by doing something fish related. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know it's just one of the kid comic things and so right from an early age i was i was doing storyboarding mm. doing panels i was thinking of things and narratives being told chronologically yeah. and stuff like that um so it's always been there and um, it took me a while to find it because all i did at school was fine art mm -hmm. so i didn't know anything else um, and then when I went to art school, I suddenly saw all these different mm -hmm. avenues. You know, I could be an illustrator, I could be a graphic designer, I could be mm. all these different things. And it was... Uh, just for reference yeah. for the younger audience, so they can yeah. relate a bit, like uh, age-wise. Um, yeah. uh, how old were you back then when you made that transition or when you discovered the other pieces, just was, so the younger audience can relate a bit? Yeah, it was... Pro oh, when was that then? So I think I graduated school around when I was 18. Mm. So yeah, probably around uh -huh. 18, 19... I think is when I did yeah, the application yeah. year. Um, yeah, so that, that was when I got mm -hmm. all these different avenues and realized that all I've wanted to do the whole time is, is you know, just tell stories in mm. ways. And so I fell in love with animation, which has been my passion from, from day one. <laughs> That's beautiful, especially yeah. because animation uh, encompasses so many various disciplines. There's yeah, like, okay, okay, you basically need to be an art director, you need to be an artist. Yeah. Uh, 
you need to like you need to factor in sound as well. Oh and gosh, like, sound is such it's a basically like component. pre exactly exactly. Yeah. And it's like basically like one of the precursors to VR because you create a reality. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a not two D plane or if it's a three D animation or a yeah. game later on. Um, it's still a reality. Um, doesn't matter how it's confined, but yeah. it's a reality, and you've got to factor in all the variables. Like, okay, this is sound, this is the mood, this is the emotion I want to communicate. Yeah, and there's so many different hats you you need to wear, really. So yeah. that's, that that's explains cool. a lot. That explains why your art is so good because you Aww. probably like subconsciously already factor all these things in. You don't even think about it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It becomes yeah. second nature after a while. Yeah, and that's, that's why I love VR art as well, is that whole world mm. aspect. And um, when I paint characters, I'm always thinking about their background mm. and their narratives, and it's all just from being an animator, really. <laughs> I have yeah. quite a few animators which are, are all, um, you know, pondering with VR and testing uh, potential as well. It, it's I see it being a big thing in the animation world. I really do. Mm. That's that's amazing, amazing to hear. That's like the uh, animation path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Led you to to VR basically because as an animator, you're also exposed to new technologies all the time. Oh constantly. yeah. And and one and thing if you do, really yeah, yeah. to use as well, <laughs> like Maya. And oh, that's the thing. Yeah. Very <laughs> awful UI programs, and then I come into mm. like Tiltbrush where everything's so stripped back and easy, and it's just heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I was like, that's the that's an amazing amazing point you bring up because yeah. um, when you as like like a, it's let's say this is now the traditional animator who sits in front of Maya or three D S Max and yeah, yeah, yeah. and rigs everything and yeah. and then animates it and it's like you're confronted with the interface. You're sitting in front of the two D screen and yeah. you have these abstract icons, which are for their time the best thing. Yeah, how to communicate the information or the function behind it. Yeah, but it's like it, the process of communicating your idea into the computer on the screen is like it is very disjointed. Let's yeah. let's call it, it disjointed really because it's like it's not intuitive. And from being because as a yeah yeah from being in VR for so long as well, I just want to hop through this. Mm -hmm. It makes it really long <laughs> in the mouth all the time. I just want to like go in there and move my character. With my hands <laughs> instead of my exactly like the natural way exactly yeah, it's like yeah. you're if you're a kid you play with the puppets you just grab yeah. the puppet and make it do the thing yeah absolutely i was like there's there's also like i think tori is pretty cool tori right yeah, now they're much, they're pushing so many good updates we really need to play with i mean neither I see so many cool stuff happening right now. Also, like Quill is doing amazing oh, things right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, the timeline and everything. Mm, really oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, your favorite tool? I see you do a lot of tilt brush. Um, is, is tilt brush your favorite tool? Can you elaborate a bit yeah. on your experience with tilt brush? Yeah. See, um, yeah, because I, I, I often, if I'm doing personal projects, I will mm. just jump to tilt brush. Because it's so lovely to use. It, it it's happy. Mm. It's a really happy place to be, and everything talks to you. Like the the brushes make yeah. make noises, and it's just it's a beautiful <laughs> place to be, and it really is. So I often just you phrased it beautifully with like it talks to you. That's it does. Beautiful. It it, and it 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 gives you haptic feedback whenever you touch things. It it, it mm. feel things. It's lovely. So I just. Oh, straight away, if I'm working on a personal thing, it's like, yeah, tilt brush. Um, for some time, <laughs> I've opted for quill just because it gives mm. me that extra layer of technical, um, mm. technical things like layers, um, yeah. colorizing, and easy editing, easy manipulation mm -hmm. of the brush strokes. Because you know, if client feedback is a bit like, oh, can you just change this? And yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. hop in and just manipulate it really simply. But with tilt brush, unfortunately, yeah. there isn't that option. So, um, mm. yeah. so sometimes I, if I'm looking for something a little bit more on the technical side, I'll hop into Quill. Mm -hmm. But yeah, mainly tilt brush is my go-to. I see. I see. I, I totally see that. But I, I also, I think I also have like the most hours locked in tilt brush because yeah. if you need to get it and get an idea out, it's the fastest way, really. It really um, is. Yeah. I like to compare it to like a like a pencil, like a pencil on a random piece of paper because yeah. 
there's nothing between you and your idea basically yeah. so there's no no interface like Absolutely. slowing down the process or um you don't need to prepare anything or no need to think in advance of like oh, okay i'm gonna export this later on so i have to keep in mind that the normals need to be aligned this way and it's like no you just do your thing in tilt press yeah so. <laughs> and you can easily add lighting and rendering effects as well whereas with yes. quill you gotta all point that yourself which is a bit mm. but with tilt brush you could just add a light uh do some highlighter stuff to make some light rays and quickly tone things um to give them that yeah. bit of death it's really fast it's so so crazy intuitive i agree it's like yeah it's so much fun it's still and it's like it never gets old really because no, um we've been doing this for so many years now and we still figure out new ways of like okay if you use this brush with this brush you get this kind of effect it's like oh interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like even after years and years and it's like yeah because it's so simple yeah it makes you be become resourceful with what you have and be creative with, with what you have because you're operating within these confined yeah, yeah it's not necessarily confined but it's like yes yeah, mm, it's enough is enough to make you go create for a very long time yeah yeah because like we still remember when it was you know like two pages of brushes and no whole <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> It's so good you mentioned that. That's yeah. so good because I think back then there was like a feather brush, like a brush that made like a feather thing come yeah. out. It's like, ah, huh. and there's like there was no scaling. Uh, oh, did you? Gosh, no, there wasn't. No. Oh, there was the like the very first oh, version, I think. There's like I bought the HTC Vive. Yes. Yeah, um, immediately on on launch. And yeah. it's like, I tried that and it's like, there was no scaling. So like oh. everything you painted was in one to one scale. And it's like, I was, <laughs> and there was, I, I started out by doing like, how do I start? How do I show these uh, things to people? So I started out doing like video game characters because they were the bridge to like, this is something, you know, and like, but check this out in virtual reality. So there's like a bridge for people to check out virtual reality. And it was like these super shitty video game characters. I can't look at them. And I was like, I, I cringe so hard when I look at them. And I was like, that's Jesus like, that's Christ. That's how I feel for my <laughs> stuff, man. The, the really early Inktober I did. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, no. Why do you I'm think that is? Why do you think that is? It's just, I haven't deleted It's such an artist thing. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> People can still go and look at those monstrosities I did two years ago. I haven't deleted it... <laughs> It's so cringy, right? I told him, but why is that? Why do we feel that way? It was like, okay, we grow as artists, we grow as humans, we learn a couple of new things, but it's like, but why does it hurt so much to look at? It's like, ah, oh, did I do that? Ah, oh, that it looks like it's, shit. It's, <laughs> yeah, if you're an artist, you 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 love your art, uh, you're so protective mm. over it, and then and then as you develop, all those feelings you have, it's yeah. gone <laughs> because you just hate uh, it. what you've done. <laughs> Oh, it's also it's also a really nice thing if you look at it it's like it's basically like a time machine you look at your old old art and you're like you know it immediately it's like how you kind of felt that day what happened around that time of the year and it's like even if it's years ago you look at that piece of shitty art and it communicates to yourself so much information yeah no that's so true it is like little little time capsule exactly exactly but it's the, also like one of the reasons why i wanted to talk to people like you to kind of put down a milestone for every one of us because we've been doing this for so long and things yeah. move faster and faster so yeah, they do. it's like we all know these struggles like okay you had these only two pages of brushes and it's like yeah. um if we don't document it's like it's only in our heads and it's like um <laughs> I, I hope i hope someone out there can get some weird last ones like scaling tool is luxury guys Remember <laughs> back back in my back in our days we had no scale brushes <laughs> <laughs> um also rosie uh if you could time travel we, when we when we are already time doing our time traveler thing if you could time travel 10 years into the past oh. what would you tell rosie from 10 years ago oh, what life advice would you give her oh no i oh that's such a good question 
Oh, it's so hard, I right? Told you to, it's like, super hard. I was in an interview once. I said, "Where do you see yourself in five years?" I'm like, "I don't, I don't know." I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I'd... it's super hard. It is. It is. Um, man. Um, just oh, for I, reference, I, I like to ask this question. All... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. If I'd started to pursue a path which wasn't creative, like which I was thinking for, uh, for a while, I was thinking, you know, mm. oh my god, I'm not going to make any money. I'm just going to be a poor artist, mm. crap work. Um, <laughs> so, but I didn't. I actually still pursued my passion, which I, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm so happy at myself. I did that, um, even when I felt I I, sh- I shouldn't. Mm. Um, so that I, I'm, yeah. So. But if I hadn't pursued that path, then that's exactly what I'd be telling myself to do is uh, just, just do it. It makes you happy. You know, that's, that's the mm. important thing. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'd try to think what I, I'd, I don't know. Um, it's super hard. It's really hard. I like to ask these questions like question. if I sit in the train and like there's an old couple sitting in front of me. I always ask the old couples, hey, if you could give yourself, your younger self an advice. I always like that. And it's like the most amazing things happen. Like they tell you these amazing stories and it's like made me think so much about life. And I think that's also um, people like, like you and me and all the other creative people who put ourselves out there is like, we also kind of have like this responsibility yeah. of um, uh, inspiring people, not just through our art, but also like, hey, grab grab your life by whatever you want to grab it, but yeah. just grab it and do something with it. Yeah. Just yeah. like you said earlier. Yeah, I get, I get the main thing would be to just any of the doubts that, that I ever had, just just to don't just stick with what, what makes, stick, stick what makes me happy and be yep. passionate at what, whatever you know whatever costs and do do what makes you happy and and mm. yeah and be nice to people and yeah and just <laughs> don't, don't don't be too shitty of a person i agree with that <laughs> yeah for, for myself but i guess yeah that's that'd be the main thing was just rosie just keep doing keep doing what you love and you will go far this is I totally feel I would I would probably answer the same way because yeah. back then when you remember it's like as a if you're starting out and you don't have the the, the confidence as a person yeah. and as a creator it's like you don't know where you are you're walking through this creative fog and you're kind of lost and yeah. there's no feedback coming from the outside world it's like hey am I going somewhere am I even moving in some direction yeah is this a direction at all and it's like <laughs> you get no feedback but you know you're going somewhere because yeah. you're waking up every day and doing something and practicing and yeah the only thing that keeps you going is that weird burning passion we talked about, about at the beginning is like your gut telling you i need to do this now yeah yeah and then and push challenge yourself as well and, and push mm. quite a few times like back in the back in the day i, I was just i never yeah. really challenged myself i was just you know you know just just living comfortably but as as i yeah. uni I, I really started to to just do things that i wasn't comfortable with and it really helped me mm. confident because i really was not confident i'm, I'm still not fully confident but um but yeah but um just pushing myself to do things that i was mm. a little bit not so comfortable to do really really helped me yeah get over some fears especially with public speaking and everything um just oh yeah I was, I was like, absolutely even when i hadn't done anything before i was like yeah sure i'll, I'll try it mm. <laughs> and it, it just <laughs> some step but yeah uh, yeah it's this that is amazing that is an amazing advice also like hidden there because it's like um what you're basically saying is like challenge yourself leave your comfort zone yeah absolutely and it is the most scariest part of the things is. you say, like public speaking, putting yourself out there, yeah. even just showing your creations and art out there, yeah. just showing up. And because it's a pretty intimate thing, it's like you create something and it's a part of you yeah. and you just show it there yeah. on a daily basis. And that is super intimate. And that is a hard yeah. thing, like even that alone. But you, uh, like you say, it's like public speaking, showing up and yeah. it's like, that's how you grow. You put yourself out there. You're leaving the comfort zone, and 
I agree wholeheartedly with that sentiment because it's so hard. It is really hard. It is. It took me quite a while to get into the whole social media swing of things as well. And mm. um, oh, yeah. to put my work on social media and stuff, I was a bit like, <laughs> but I, I spent two, two minutes on the sketch. It's not worthy. And it's just, just do it anyway. You know? <laughs> just, I'll just. Yeah, exactly. That's, the, that's, I'm so glad you say that. That's the thing is like, because the internet allows us to compare ourselves to the entire planet all of a sudden that never happened in human history that suddenly is like okay this is the social hierarchy you're somewhere down there when you start out it's like yeah. it's not very motivating and uh, it's so hard to like um uh first and foremost like be put your work out there on a, on a regular basis and yeah. then make yourself vulnerable through that and yeah super hard really? so but i'm glad you did it i'm glad you were brave enough to to do that so otherwise you would not be doing this weird thing but we were both in virtual reality painting and talking and talking absolutely it's amazing yeah. <laughs> well, rosie what, what are you drawing right now um i'm doing some sort of like uh meta tree <laughs> uh, it's... i'm also making the tree <laughs> <laughs> it's so in sync yeah. <laughs> it's so weird yeah it's, it, no that's really cool i always draw um man. it's just so so nice to draw trees they don't make me so happy i think it's, it's beautiful i think you can't go wrong with drawing a tree no. like it doesn't matter your skill level or who you are it's like trees make everyone happy so. do. yeah um rosie you've so I've seen you use the quest quite a bit. What's your your experience with it so far? Uh, yeah, I um, I've turned the quest into my little virtual sketchbook, so I can go uh -huh. with me to places, um, do sketches on the go, stuff like that. It mm. revolutionized the way I work so that on the go sort of VR, yeah. which was never never available before, and I used to do like sketches on the bus on the train stuff like that if i'm thinking of ideas mm -hmm. and now if i'm you know in a, in a place where i'm safe and not going to get mobbed i could just hop into a headset <laughs> and um, paint to my heart's desires in a yeah. world instead it's absolutely fantastic um That's beautiful. one of my best purchases that i've ever I've ever made mm. i was a bit thingy and one and at first because i've already got headsets and stuff like that but yeah. right now this is a new thing this is absolutely revolutionary i could do vr wherever i want to do vr um it's an absolute yeah. game changer like you yeah. say i agree 100 percent with that yeah yeah so that, yeah that that's what the quest has become really be doing the max amount of time i've ever spent in it really and in one shot is about an hour and a half mm -hmm. um so it's usually just like do quick doodles uh quick yeah. sketches i i took it on holiday with me um where i did mm -hmm. a sketch each night about what I'd done that day. Yep. So I went to um, the beach, or if I went to fireworks display or something, I would go back uh -huh. that night and I'd paint what I'd experienced from the photos that I'd taken and mm. sort of preserved my memories in like a little virtual memory book. So it was, it's really like whenever I go back into those sketches I did, I'm instantly taken back to the time I drew them. Like I, mm. to, to the extent that I remember what I was wearing and there's some of, some of the smells yeah. in the room and stuff like that. It's the immersiveness of the medium just encapsulates mm. um, what I was experiencing at the time of painting. It's ridiculous. I absolutely love it. I'm so happy you mentioned that. It's yeah. so interesting yeah. what kind of things we discover because um, we also mentioned this, like this triggering of memories mm. it's like recalling of memories and it's so intense it's like okay you know it's like you look at a photograph that you have in your hand or your on your phone it's like you get some information back yeah. it's like okay that was that was an interesting day but um the associations are so strong when you create something like you just described on the on your beach experience yeah. so uh yeah. it's a completely different level it is yeah. uh super interesting like i would love to talk to some neurologist oh. or brain person oh, about that it's like um because i've experienced similar things after um like you know the scaling motion when you hold the uh 
the, the finger buttons yes, and yeah. open and close your arms. Yeah. And I noticed that sometimes when you sleep and dream, you scale your dream up and down. I it's like that. And I was like, it's so weird. Yeah. It is so crazy. And it's like your brain learns this thing. Yeah. And it's like, you do it every day. It's normal. Just do it in your dream. It's like an <laughs> autopilot thing. Absolutely. No, I've had that. It's insane. This, and I wonder where does this go? Because we learn so many uh, things subconsciously uh, through through the things like our, our relationship to our bodies. Because when we interact with our work, uh, we don't see our hands. We there's nothing in between us in this dialogue between our yeah, yeah. art or design or creation or animation or whatever we create in VR. Yeah. There's no disconnection. There's like this dialogue is so direct and pure because yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't have your phone notifications coming in. Yeah. You, there's just you and your creation is yeah. so intimate. That is so, so true. I, I've said this quite a few times now is how mm. there's no distractions. It's just you and your artwork, very personal. No one else can see it. Yeah. Just, just you can see what you're drawing unless obviously mm. you've got it plugged in and everyone can see what you're doing. Um, but but yeah, it's so, so intimate, so personal. And that's another reason why I love it so much. I agree so much with that. It's like, that's the next thing really is like, we as humans never had this, we, we couldn't experience this ever before to this extent. No. Because technology wouldn't allow it in the past. But, oh. uh, and then you factor in like the internet as well. Yeah. And we would have the chances of us meeting in person or us just knowing of each other's existence and all the friends we made in the industry or uh, um, I don't even want to call it industry because it like makes it like work related, which it yeah. is not anymore. Yeah. So um, it's like, it would be impossible. But now look at us doing this thing here right now. <laughs> and and Absolutely. it's just so mind blowing. You just go back and tell that to a person 10 years ago. When just smartphones, smart smartphones became a thing slowly with the first iPhone coming around. It's like you have a phone, you have a rectangle in your pocket that connects you to the entire planet, and then you have virtual reality. People would thought you were crazy if you have that yeah. in ten years. Really, really, really. Yeah. That's fascinating. Rosie, if you had a wish, what is your VR wish? Like where do you want your journey to go? I'm not asking what if, no, I'm telling, I'm asking like, where do you want your journey to go? Because I know you can do it. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, well, I'm loving the state that I'm in right now with being able to mm. have the luxury of doing performances in front of audiences and stuff like yeah. that and, and continuing down this journey of painting spaces that are mm. existing. And the big, for technology wise, the answer to that question, my wish would be to have transparency um, with the medium. Mm. So I don't have to sit with a box on my face. I don't have to <laughs> feel, feel <laughs> so the, com the confines of that. I can just be transparent and, and have the yeah. worlds um, sort of, you know, exist around me mm. and, um, yeah. Rather than like me existing inside them, they they will have they will have their own entity, their own existence. Um, yeah. That'd be absolutely amazing. Um, and yeah, just, just being able to really just connect even deeper with my work mm. and find ah, I see. even deeper connections. Yeah. I love that. I really love that. Yeah. It's like because you're you got what we just now are getting. It's like just a taste of what's to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see, you know what's coming next, but you're impatient. Yeah. Impatient. It's like, ah, it's theoretically, it's always just, it's not that far away, no, but it no, is we've not already seen here now. <laughs> a really light weight, um, which is perfect, but, but they're, mm. they're not six degrees of freedom. They're still... Still yeah. three degrees, but um, yeah, I'm hoping we really start to see some really lightweight headset gear. Come mm. like, what's going to make it mainstream? Because people, a lot of people just don't want such things on the, their faces. A lot of people just want want mm. like sunglasses, which <laughs> is very much fun. Yeah, yeah. But that's <laughs> where I'd love to see it because that'd be amazing. That is so true. It's like the like democratization of the hardware itself. Um, 
because when we started out it was like okay you buy this 800 pound box with sensors and yep. and okay that's one part okay you need like this high-end gaming machine that's like one or two grand as well yep. it's like that barrier of entry is like this is too high it's like too yep. far to go mainstream but yep. we've seen a transition now we talked about earlier with the quest for example like you outlined it's like it's amazing oh yeah. and the price point is also fair and its potential also really really good yeah, yeah. and then like i love how you described the next step which will happen it's just a matter of time yeah, like yeah. the uh, like how you phrase it with transparency with lies um, yeah it's like you're making the technology itself invisible yeah yeah, yeah. and then you're fully immersed and then then, then you feel like you're actually exactly with your, with your work because you're you, i'm often really immersed but then i feel a wire or i feel mm. i feel some pressure on my face or something and then i'm just thrown out of the emotion and i know where i am yeah i'd love to just be like fully immersed exactly uh, it's so good to talk to you about this because it's like you're confronted when you're in this very intimate process of extracting your imagination into reality it is doesn't exist if it's in your head properly it's like you put it into the under the virtual canvas and the idea becomes real and when you're confronted with technology because like, okay there's a pressure on your head this is heavy it's uncomfortable you're reminded of like oh, okay it's not there yet but yeah. It's like it's frustrating because it's like it's too good and then it's all of a sudden it's like you're reminded no there's technology between you and the thing you're making yeah it's gonna happen we're gonna get those lightweight headsets i, I look so forward to all the cool stuff that's happening it's like um what i hope will happen is like the seamless transition between vr and ar in the future where you yeah. like you said like you have the sunglasses you just tap on the side of your sunglasses and you switch seamlessly between vr and ar so messy. i love that yeah but the, the issue some of some of the things is i wouldn't like it to be that it's like fully ar because i love the escape mm. of VR, and, and and that's one of the reasons why i prefer <laughs> a lot of the art stuff to ask oh, yeah. i don't want to see my bedroom i want to see my, my this forest or this this magical landscape i don't just want to see my yeah. in my bedroom i want to you know be inside it as well i love the escape yeah. so to combine the two um you can have that escapism like you can have your room transformed into this virtual space that you've made or something like that that that's that's a balance that's such think. a beautiful idea i love that i love that idea yeah. um it's also, uh, I really, really like that you pointed that out because we live in this attention economy where we cannot really escape from because everywhere you go, you have ads, you have notifications from your phone yeah. and everywhere you go is like this constant draining of your attention and focus and, and VR is one of the new places. I hope it stays this way that you have enough control in the future that you can just have zero notifications which you have right now basically yeah, yeah. Still. um it's like imagine there's no ads on the internet it's like unimaginable nowadays but if i think there was a time <laughs> sometime in the past there was a time when there were no ads on the internet hopefully yeah <laughs> and that's what vr is right now because there's no notifications there's no hey you got this many things happening and like here's your social you're constantly reminded hey yeah. you have social media or hey this thing i was like no it's like a creative isolation let's call yes. it that where you can't be taken out of yeah yeah involuntarily and That's i'm afraid of this, really. I, I really enjoy that i really enjoy not being notified of anything when i'm yeah. here same how's your tree going Good. I've got another tree now, and I'm making a little. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little tree friend. <laughs> little happy tree. <laughs> happy. Just, just. It's all a little secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, Rosie, the uh, in the UK, the industry. Um, yes. Where I see you working so hard with your peers there. Um, also like some media companies, there's like, you're, you're pushing really hard to, to educate the people around the technology and its possibilities. Do you have any favorite experiences so far? Like 
uh, have you work with kids or certain workshops or talks or yeah i mean what's really rewarding and, and lovely to do each year is um curate this vr film festival um so oh. well it's it's leeds young film what's festival. the name of it so it's film festival here in leeds and um it's it's um aimed at young audiences and families oh. and each year i curate their vr segment and um mm -hmm. it's evolved quite quite a lot now so we started off with just tilt brush drop-ins um uh -huh. and then we evolved to tilt brush drop-ins and drop-in for experiences where kids and families can sit mm -hmm. down and and experiences experience things on the rift and stuff like that and then uh -huh. there's um now in, in the next step which is actually mm. um making a vr cinema so we mm -hmm. got last year it was, it was amazing we had bean bags um pretty lights we really dressed up this space and made it really lovely oh, really cool. comfortable um it's a lovely happy space to be in and then we mm. had tons and tons of headsets which kids and families would sit down and and immerse into mm -hmm. uh, vr together and, and watch films and i love doing that it's beautiful. It's free. so I love that. allowing people to have their first time the first experiences in vr together because mm. um, usually vr is quite isolating um but with with yeah, yeah. you can all sit down together and they're watching everything at the same time um together and it's just really really lovely and rewarding to do um so yeah that that's yeah that that has been a fantastic experience because the whole festival has just evolved year by year. Mm. New things um, that we're doing, that we're trying, and um, and yeah, that, that's love doing it. <laughs> that sounds lovely. I'll make sure to include it in uh, to ask you for the link or some documentation of it in the transcript for other people to check out uh, yeah, yeah. the work you did there or for future events. I'll make sure to include a link there. Yeah. And that sounds beautiful. Like yeah. especially working with kids. Yeah, that's like you see it in their eyes like it's like it's not just the regular vr smiles like yeah you show them tilt brush for example and then you let them create something yeah and then you pat them on the shoulder and it's like hey you did a great job and suddenly like this fire like in an anime yeah. it's like <laughs> wow I, it's like it's uh, so rewarding to like work with kids in that in this space and to have them have so much positive feedback it's like I don't know how to describe it. That's one of the most gratifying things you can do in this industry right now. It is yeah. so good. I agree. Because their imaginations are often limited when they're faced with paper and stuff like that. And, mm. you know, stop drawing on the walls, you know, all this sort of stuff. But in, exactly, in VR, yeah. The whole There's rules to creation, like for yeah. the parents or sons or whatever. Yeah. They're always limited in their creativity with how far they can mm. go. Um, but with VR, they have this space where they can run, run riot and make neon exactly. and stuff like that it's fantastic <laughs> it's beautiful it's such a good example i'm so glad you bring it up it's like it's like you always see it in the movies like where the kids are told like don't draw with the crayons on the wall <laughs> yeah. and it's like in, in vr you say go ape shit on those walls with with the rainbows or whatever <laughs> yeah, for the first time they have a space where they can do that and just let their imagination mm. take control um with yeah. being so limited all the time let them express themselves how they want. If they want to draw on the walls, exactly. they can draw on the walls in, in virtual worlds. I love that. I love that so much that yeah. you also experienced that, or that not just experienced it, you did. Like, I love that you factor in the entire environment because if you say you put their beanbags in, it's like oh, yeah. you're focusing on making the entire experience from the onboarding yeah. till the finished thing as comfortable as possible, yeah. like the entire experience. That is so with important. the mood and tone of uh, comfort, comfort. Yeah, it really is. It's it's so important to make people feel comfortable because they're getting one of their senses mm. removed. You know, they're, they're gonna not be able to <laughs> see the physical world for a while. So you gotta like yeah. on on board them as as nice and as comfortable as you can to make those experiences yeah. in VR the best. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. It's like also you mentioned expression earlier on. It's like you allow people to express themselves. Oh, yeah. Um, we strap this piece of plastic to our faces. Yeah. And we think we are in a different space now and not a human anymore sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and that really hammers home the point of like, we're kind of like still these weirdo monkeys. We're like, oh, I have this piece of plastic on my head. 
I'm I'm a spaceship now. Sorry, I'm not a human anymore. I'm in space now. Leave me alone. It's like it's very interesting to see our evolution when it comes to that and how yeah. easily our uh, senses are tricked into doing other things. And, yeah. and where do you see the entire expression thing come up? Because we've seen cool hardware mods or avatars in VR chat. And, oh gosh, um, yeah. Do you have a favorite example regarding like our expression and the technology that it brings us? So that's, that's a great question. Um, well, yeah, I think one of the biggest things of expression for me is being able to use mm. the body in virtual space, being able to, because uh -huh. um, I've always liked, you know, video calling in, in preference to telephones. Yeah. You can express that a little bit more. But with VR, you can mm. express that step further and actually show your whole body moving and, and, and that whole, uh -huh. whole body motion, which is which is why I fell in love with VR performance, because... That's, that's what it is. Your body's making the artwork. Mm. Which movement you make, is it, it determines how the paint stroke looks, which is mm. absolutely love amazing. Um, so love that's, it. yeah, that's the form of expression I love. Uh, so good. Uh, that's such a good point. That is so smart because now that you say it, it's like we've kind of disjointed the form of communications while expanding on it. It's like, okay, we have a telephone. It's like you can communicate with the person on the other side of the planet, but the price is only voice. Yeah. So, and then we technology improve further. It's like, okay, you can now communicate also with a moving picture. Yeah. But uh, it's like, it's just 2D flat. It's like we're yeah. kind of un unraveling, unfolding the form of communications again. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. Huh. This is awesome. Rosie, I think I think this is my thing is going somewhere what I painted. And oh, yeah, same, same I here. think I think I'm I think this conversation was so helpful for for all the people who who will listen to this and also yeah. um kind of a uh like I mentioned in the beginning is like like an artifact for us where yeah. we kind of leave a piece of us for future generations to see or just documenting a piece of our journey and yeah. i'm very grateful you you're open for being the first one to do this no, it I'm very great thank you really so much Rosie. it really does honestly thank you <laughs> um guys make sure to follow rosie on her instagram rosie summers in uh twitter uh, she also has a YouTube, I saw. Rosie, do you have another platform I forgot to mention? Uh, no, that's it, really. Uh, my tag is VR <laughs> underscore Rosie um, on mm. Twitter and then VR underscore Rosie underscore on Instagram. <laughs> I, I also have the underscore on Twitter. I totally feel it's like, ah, dang it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I make sure it's like you guys can check it out. I'll put it in the transcript. I'll link up her festivals, her artwork and her social media i highly encourage you guys if you haven't already but like do it just follow her otherwise you miss out on yeah. some of the best talk brush work out there oh, thank, you. Uh, thank you so much rosie this was a wonderful yeah, conversation and thank you for for uh making the future cool with me oh thank you no it's been such a pleasure thank you so much and thanks to everyone and for listening as well you're more than welcome and i look forward to uh having you again like and for the next milestone. I don't know when that is, one year or two years, but thank you so, so much. Thank you.